Freddie Villano here with Base Gear Magazine talking to Jonas Helborg about his new signature Dogal strings. This is the five string set, also available in the four string set. Mm -hmm. So Jonas, tell, how did you, uh, you know, I, based on some research, I see that Dogal's uh, sort of famous for classical instrument strings. So maybe you could just give us a little background first on how you connected with them and then we'll talk about the strings themselves. Uh, well, I guess I connected to them originally just from the very fact that they are based in Venice, which I obviously spent a lot of time in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recognize the fact that they are one of the uh, uh, serious manufacturers of classical strings or, or the strings for classical instruments mm -hmm. like like uh, acoustic guitars of course but but cello violin and upright bass and all, all that those kind of things and also there is a there is a great string making tradition in uh, in uh, venice going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years so that, that's why we were first uh, started to talk and my my journey with strings is, is very, very long. I mean, I've been working on trying to improve strings for, for a good 30 years or so, and mainly with DR strings over the, over the decades. And um, I kind of felt that I wasn't getting anywhere with that cooperation. And, uh, and we, I started to talk to Dugal and we, we started actually Making some some ground on on uh, new approaches to to the to the string making and and uh, you know with the the strings I used to have with uh, with DR was basically a traditional round core with a single wrap on them of of the the softest material that would function with electric instruments which was pure nickel at the time. But still, there was still problems with the, particularly the thicker strings. And when I started to, to uh, research with Dugal the, the different options for making a core in a different way, we, we started looking at how, how cello strings and, uh, and upright bass strings are made, which is with a braided core. Oh. And uh, and the great advantage of it uh, is that it becomes extremely flexible, which improves the purity of the pitch or the, the, that the um, overtone series are actually more in tune with the fundamental. And that is, that is what uh, is the, the major advantage, the major, uh, how would you say, improvement with mm -hmm. these strings from previous strings. How, so um, how does that translate for the everyday player who's going to pick up a set of these strings and put them on their bass? I mean, they're going to get more sustain, but you know, more accurate tone, like in terms of like a well, actually more more accurate pitch because pitch mm -hmm. and and actually the, the, a very interesting parallel is uh, I had my piano renovated in Vienna and they and we were discussing about strings for the piano and they said oh we have this French new string it's fantastic you know and all that and they put it on and I got it here and I started uh, analyzing it and I realized that no these these are not not these are no good because because the strings are so stiff, uh, the, the fundamental is not, for instance, in tune with the second octave. Mm. There are different pitches, there are different notes, be because the, the way the strings move, the, string, the way the strings vibrate. And, and that creates a problem in, in tuning, because what are you tuned to? Do you tune to the fundamental or do you tune to the, <laughs> to the uh, yeah. harmonic? Right. And, and this is a unrecognized problem with bass strings because, and, and you would find it if you take a good uh, frequency analyzer or a good uh, tuning app and you look at how, how, how off the octaves and the, the other fundamental, the other harmonics are, you realize that, oh my God, I cannot, I cannot even tune this instrument properly. And, and you will hear it very clearly on lower strings when you, for instance, 
play these strings and you and you you play a low note for instance together with the piano or a, or a or a guitar you all of a sudden hear oh no this is actually in tune mm. but i, I think uh, what they do with piano and what people have gotten used to is that they are not so concerned about the pitch about being in tune they are concerned about loudness and character of sound so if the character of sound is the same in the bass as in in the mid range they sacrifice the pitch and particularly if they if the piano can put out a lot of of uh, sound pressure mm -hmm. then then they just accept oh there you have it oh it sounds wonderful because any, anyway you have you play a piano concerto with 100 uh, uh, other players it's going to yeah. be some out of tune that's going on and and so if the if the piano is a bit uh, wavy it's it, it's not uh, the greatest catastrophe is probably the way people are thinking and it's the same thing with uh, with bass people are used to a certain type of sound or sound character and they don't they don't focus on the on the actual pitch accuracy and really expecting it to be in tune right and you can, you can if you compare to when uh, people are, for instance playing uh, synthesizer bass like moog bass and stuff Mm -hmm. That is so much more in tune, and you you recognize this phenomenon when you have these new strings that we made, and you and you actually play. You know, it's that same kind of oh, this is actually in tune, just like when you when you hit the synthesizer bass low note. Well, you mentioned a braided core. Is that something? Um, I, I mean, would that is that something unique to what? Dogal does, and would it be hard for like a major corporation like, you know, DR or Dunlop or Diodario to adopt? I mean, was that part of the reason to go with a company like Dogal? Well, yeah, because because guitar strings actually, basically, first of all, bass strings is uh, is just an offshoot of guitar strings, and guitar right. strings are, are very primitive, idiotic kind of uh, <laughs> things. But yeah. it works for for guitar more or less because you don't have these problems. And it has to do with with the stiffness of the string. I mean, the, the thicker you make the core, the stiffer the string gets. And and when it gets to a certain level of stiffness, then you start to have have problems with the with the intonation of of the overtones to the to the fundamentals. And that that's where it happens. And yeah, yeah. And and so so that that technology is is unique to people who make. Um, Strings for classical instruments. It's not unique yes. to Dugal, but it's uh, it's unique to those companies that actually make uh, more advanced strings. And and uh, guitar and bass strings are very primitive, basically. Yeah, it's an interesting point you raise that an electric bass string is sort of an offshoot of a guitar string, rather yeah. than rather than being treated as as its own entity. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know. Any advice? I'm going to string up a couple of bases with these. Um, mm -hmm. I got to, I'm going to probably put the four string set on a jazz bass mm -hmm. and the five string set on a um, a, it's a Fender five string, it's a Roscoe mm -hmm. Beck signature bass. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. any any advice about you know, like stringing them up in terms of like, um, you know, sometimes when they're too long, I clip the ends. Like, should I do that, not do that, you know? Yeah, no, you, you can do that. That's okay. there, are no, there are no restrictions like that on these. Okay. Things. The uh, the the winding attaches well to the to the core, so that it's not yeah. it's not like the round core where you have to kind of conk them to yeah, to make okay. them stay on. Yeah. But no, no, it's fine. It's it's all it's, it should all be good. Yeah. And uh, and 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 of course, it's it's not the same sound as as your regular bass string because it's it's a different uh, it's a different kind of string. Yeah. And uh, and if you if one has the uh, sound idea that is that old type of string, yeah, fine. That's that's what you. <laughs> that's what that is. This is something different, and it yeah. has advantages. And uh, and if your preference is in another kind of string, then that you know that's what right. you should use. But yeah. but here here you do uh, uh, have some advantage, and I think it was. Uh, Ed Friedland pointed out in on a Facebook post when he heard somebody demonstrating them that they work very well for for playing chords. Mm -hmm. 
on base. And that is actually really a big point, this, particularly in the low register when you, where it's normally when you play a chord in the low register on the bass, it gets, it gets very confusing and muddy and you cannot hear yeah. at all what's going on. But with these strings, you can. Um, we got to get a set to Colin Hodgkinson then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, what about gauges? I didn't see any. Uh, are they just standard um, gauge? Because I, I didn't see any information. Yeah, that's the. They are like standard gauge. You know, whatever. I think they are something like around uh, E string is around a hundred or something like that. Yeah. Okay. But but what, what I found also with gauges, with uh, everybody has their own interpretation of what it is. They calculate mm -hmm. it or they measure it, and and I, I find it kind of pointless. And particularly now, with these strings having this uh, very flexible core, what you normally uh, sort of anticipate in a, in a gauge is, is that kind of stiffness or 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 flexibility. So. So it's, it's a totally different animal here. You just have to go from scratch with it. So that's why we started with just having one one size, one gauge. Yeah. That's, oh, okay. That, yeah, then, then people can play to it. And then we can, in the future, if there are uh, demands for it, then we might make heavier strings or lighter strings or whatever. But uh, I, I think the only way, way, only thing would that might happen is heavier strings because these are, these are very... Uh, light action that's a very very comfortable action yeah, cool. and, they're, and they're also very bendable you actually get a lot of uh, uh, yeah pitch bend out of them and, and actually another thing that i want to point out is mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, they are very sensitive to touch and movement so intonation is achievable and the flip side of that is like it's easy to play out of tune on them. <laughs> yeah. You know, but but you can yeah. you can actually intonate sort of like you can on a on a fretless bass much more than than a regular bass string. Where, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the application on a fretless, but that answers that question. Yeah. No, they are yeah. great on fretless also, but yeah. but we do have also uh, the uh, flats, the flat ones. Oh, okay. I don't mm -hmm. know if they have actually released them yet, but uh, they are fantastic on fretless because they have a much more uh, brilliance and openness than regular flat rounds. Mm -hmm. And I use them on my my, my uh, fretless. My vector bass now has been a fretless for a couple of years, and and I put the put a set of those flat rounds on over a year ago, and they are still absolutely like new. Oh, all right, yeah. They are incredible. <clears throat> I was going to ask you if you if are there um, is there anything publicly available with you playing these strings yet um, in terms of recordings or live performance? Uh, not not yet. Um, okay. I'm I'm about to make some uh, some videos, some demonstration videos. Okay. Just like show, showing off uh, the you know the the advantages and the character yeah. of, of the strings, but. Uh, but I haven't released any any music with them yet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna. I have a, some recording to do, so I figured I'd just try them out within yeah. like a real world context, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of structure the review around that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, all right. I'm gonna end the recording because I think that yeah. covers basically our conversation on the strings.